Hey guys, welcome to the video. So tutorial hell, web developer, developer tutorial hell. How should you deal with this? So let me just get to the point. You don't want to get caught up in trying to do this tutorial, that tutorial, this tutorial, that tutorial, this tutorial, that tutorial. If you find yourself in that situation, that's because the tutorials are not really teaching you how to code. That's a problem with a lot of coding tutorials out there. They teach you, they show you rather, the steps to do a particular type of thing, like build a shopping cart system or uh, create a Twitter clone with Node.js and React, etc. But that doesn't teach you how to code, how to be a programmer. And that's why you're stuck in tutorial hell, because you know that there's gaps in your knowledge. You don't understand. It's like eating a bag of chips. You eat a bag of chips and then you're like, eh, I'm not, I'm still hungry. I'm still feeling I need to eat more. Why? Because there's lack of substance in the food. Uh, Chips may taste good, tutorials may look cool, oh, I'm gonna to learn to build this, I'm gonna to learn to build that, but they're not actually teaching you that code. Don't get me wrong, tutorials are fine if they're used at the right time. When is the right time? After you do your fundamentals. If you understand your fundamentals, all of a sudden, the bazillion of tutorials out there on YouTube or any other platform or just the uh, a quick article, on how to do X, Y, and Z with whether Node or React or whatever technology you want. All of a sudden, all these articles, all these tutorials that are very difficult for you to understand now, all of a sudden they become very, very easy if you have the fundamentals in place. So remember, if you are running into a situation, you're in tutorial hell, you're, you're not confident about your skills, you're wondering, oh, do I know enough? Oh, I really don't understand. That's because you have a gap in your knowledge, which is the fundamentals. That's why I, that's that's what I teach and concentrate on. I do have some project courses in my curriculum, but they're not that important. In fact, people just do my foundation courses, which teach a lot, and then they don't. You know, I say do one or two of the little simple project courses like CRUD and basic database stuff, and then go out and actually write real world code. That's the key to all this, by the way. Um, if you want to become a developer quickly. If you want to quickly get a job, if you want to quickly start your freelance career, if you want to quickly be able to write production code, the key is not getting involved in tons and tons of tutorials. You don't want to be a forever prepper. You don't want to be a forever student. Well, we see that in universities where guys or girls will get their bachelor's and then they'll do a, a master's in this and then they'll shift, shift over to another uh, another type of degree and then get their bachelor's there and a master's there and then in 20, 15 years later they're still in school and and they don't know what they're going to do and they're caught into they become professional students in their late 30s and 40s even now the problem with that and the reason they're doing that is because there's they're not doing anything that they really like and they don't want to actually get out there in the real world. It's fear. A lot of it is fear. You get comfortable doing tutorials, uh, a lot of tutorials. You, you get comfortable in that place. You don't want to actually, you're insecure about jumping into the real world of coding. The irony is this. If you jump in and actually do little projects, start doing little projects, consider them your stages, you're going to learn how to code so much more quickly. There is a misconception put out there by a lot of these uh, young noob teachers out there. Um, and, you know, from an old crusty nerd like me, I'm 169 years old. It's obvious to me that what a lot of these courses out there, tutorials, courses, they're not, they're, they're taught by, taught by young guys who don't have much experience in the real world. And I see that, right? Uh, blind leading the blind. So let me summarize this. You're in tutorial hell because you feel there's lack of knowledge, holes in your knowledge. That's because the tutorials are not really teaching you uh, the fundamentals of coding, proper real world coding. Number two, you want to get into the real world actually building projects, as real projects with real clients as quickly as possible. Here is a, a basic reality of being a developer but I don't hear people talk about enough. In the first few years, at least, you are constantly learning new tech. You are constantly learning new tech. In fact, your job as a developer is to be able to evaluate new tech and to decide whether or not that new tech or that, that tech stack or that library or that framework should be deployed for the, very partic for the particular project that you're working on. 
Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying you should always look to brand new tech. In fact, I've done videos recently saying that a lot of the new technologies that come out, you gotta be very reluctant to jump into it because um, a lot of these things are unproven, immature, offer a marginal advantage over well-established technologies. And in fact, today, in 2020, a lot of the technologies out there, especially in the web stack, are very, very settled and very, very capable. Whether you, uh, you use the .NET stack or the Java stack or Python Django, I'm talking web apps here, PHP Laravel, Node.js, Express, they're all, even Ruby Rails. I'm just joking about Ruby Rails. All these technologies can produce good apps today. That's the fact of the matter is. You're not going to pick one and it's going to be amazing. The others all suck. That is a young noob's perception of things. In the old days, and I got to understand, back in the 1990s when I started writing code commercially, yes, every year or two, uh, a new tech would come out which was significant where you had to learn it and you had to migrate to that. But over the years, this quick change in the technology that we use as developers has really diminished quite a bit. That is normal. Any industry, when it starts off new, there's a quick evolution in terms of, uh, in terms of the technology. And you have to adapt and adopt quickly. This has really slowed down in the IT sector because we've pretty much solved how to do things, right? MVC-based apps, web apps, very, very uh, mature. We, we know how to do it. And if you, for example, learn Python and then Python Django, you have to learn your web stack. This is all the web stack tech for Python world. And then all of a sudden you had to do PHP Laravel or uh, Node Express. Your ability to move from one from the other wouldn't be, be very difficult at all because they're all very similar, all very similar. Personal tastes will have people will have people say, I prefer this, I prefer that stack, I prefer Node, I prefer Java, I prefer I come to this, a lot of that is personal taste, a lot of that is circumstantial, etc. Anyway, so tutorial hell. If you found yourself in tutorial hell, I would say you probably lack the basics. You're definitely insecure about jumping into the real world. But if you find yourself on your third or fourth tutorial, uh, it's time to move on. Forget about the Taurus. You got to get into the game. I'll close with this. I remember when I was, uh, I did a lot of martial arts, uh, almost three decades. And I, I coined the term back in the day, the professional pad hitter. So I was doing boxing. And yeah, and bo I was in a gym where I did boxing. It was Thai boxing, jiu-jitsu, et cetera, et cetera. Even Georges St. Pierre trained there. We had a lot of professional fighters who trained there. I remember as a group of people who I would call the, the pad hitters. They would never step in the ring to actually fight or spar. They would just do pad drills. And they were great at hitting pads. They go boom, 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 one, two, boom, boom, boom. They, they looked amazing hitting pads or hitting heavy bags. Occasionally though, these professional pad hitters, as I, as I would call them, they would jump into the ring to actually fight. And what they learned very quickly, but they didn't know how to fight at all. Because at the end of the day, if you want to learn how to fight, you're not going to do it through drills, tutorials, doing pad work. You're going to do it jumping in the ring and actually fighting. Now, don't get me wrong, doing pad work has its purpose, but it cannot be the only thing that you do. You have to do the real thing. If you want to learn to fight, you got to fight. You want to learn to code, you got to code real projects, not follow tutorials, which are just templates. Again, I'm not dissing tutorials. Tutorials can be useful, but tutorials should be after you do your foundations, then you do one or two tutorials, and then you jump into the real game and you start doing stuff. Now you do a first couple of little jobs for free as a freelancer, even if your end goal is to get a job working for a company, do a couple of freelance gigs, do them for free, consider, your sta consider those freelance gigs your stages you're learning uh, the learning, the real world learning portion of your training. Here's the great thing. A lot of people will go to boot camps, spend five grand, 10 grand, 20 grand, because they, and they say, well, I'm going to get staged. I'm going to get staged out in some company. You don't need to spend five, 10 grand, 20 grand to get stage work. You do your foundations, you put up a nice site, uh, and then you can go out there and find 
company, a small company, a startup, whatever, who needs people to do X, Y, and Z and do little projects. You're gonna learn so much, you're gonna learn so much. And guess what? I'll leave you with this. I said this about three times, but I'll leave you with this for sure. There is no coder in the world, there's no developer in the world who knows everything that's out there about software development. I'll take it, I'll take it far, far further. The best developers in the world may know three to 5% of the tech stacks that are out there, at best, right? I personally now, since I'm 169 years old, I literally, all joking aside, I literally have forgotten much more than I still remember. It's simply because the brain can only hold so much, so much information. But if you know your foundations and your fundamentals, which all these technologies are based off of, whether it be Python, Java, C Sharp, C++, JavaScript, or PHP, Ruby, they're all based on the same basic uh, constructs of programming. So if you learn how to create functions and variables and how to write code properly in, in, in Java, for example, you'll be able to do it in Python like this. As I said to other people in the past, I'd rather hire a JavaScript programmer with five years experience to do a Python job than to hire a Python programmer who's done five tutorials a programmer or is, who has maybe one year experience because the guy who know, doesn't know Python but has five years of experience writing JavaScript, his code and his Python code in about three in about an hour will be much better than the junior Python developer with only a year of experience. And the reason I say that is because the language constructs they, they, they're universal, they've been settled, if you will, in the industry. So yeah, if you're in tutorial hell, do your fundamentals, then go out there and do the real deal because you're gonna learn as you go, you're gonna research as you go, you're gonna implement as you go. That's how I did it. When I was freelancing, I would walk into a lot of gigs. I wouldn't, and even though my favorite language at the time in the late 90s was Java, I would walk into a lot of gigs and I would just say, okay, let's see what the project is. And then I would decide what language and what frameworks, what libraries I was gonna use based on the needs of the project. And it's not just technical needs, there's also uh, business uh, infrastructure oriented uh, requirements as well. If, if they've invested a lot of money in Java, for them to want to jump to C-sharp.net, they'll be very reluctant to do that. If they're invested in a lot of uh, uh, Python, they'll be very reluctant to jump into uh, PHP or Java or C-sharp, whatever. It, that's another consideration. I talked about this in other videos. So. As a freelancer, I'd walk in, look at the project. Okay, we should do this in this technology. And several times, I didn't know anything about that tech. I would learn it. But because I knew the fundamentals, because I was a professional developer, I, I was comfortable learning any new technology, depending on what the needs of the job were. I hope this helps you out with tutorial hell. Don't get caught up in it. It's time to get into the ring and start coding for real. Trust me, you're going to learn so much quicker when you do it that way.